So fundamentally, clean tech has been called the next industrial revolution. So many of you are sitting in this room for various reasons. You might be here because you're committed to changing the world, you know, greenhouse gases, you want to make sure we can give our children a better world. You might be here because, you know, it's the next hype and there's lots of funding here. Or you may be here because you are scientists and you are people who create and innovate and come up with interesting technologies. But <clears throat> if any of you have read the book from Thomas Friedman called Hot, Flat and Crowded, he basically says that, you know, what has to happen is almost a dot-com and a dot-com bust for the clean tech industry. It's inevitable, but that's the path we have to go. We have to innovate so quickly and so frequently and so abundantly everywhere, and we cannot necessarily pick winners or losers, but we need to be able to have this momentum building so that we can come up with solutions that can fix the problems that we are facing. So how do you ensure as you're sitting here, coming up with your clean tech company idea, that you are one of those riders and not one of those losers. Well, I think that's what you're here for. This, you come back to business fundamentals. Because no matter what, you still have to go back in terms of what is the pain you're addressing. Do not be technology driven, even though you might come out with something and say, this is really cool, you know, because I have it in the lab. You now have to see and test it in terms of what the market needs. You have to have a strong team. You have to understand the market pain. You have to working proof, think global. You'll be hearing over the next few days people going into details about how do you write your business plan, how do you pitch to your to an investor. These business fundamentals ultimately are what is going to determine whether you're on the rider and loser. <laughs>